If you're still using VLOOKUPs, you are wasting hours. I'm gonna show you how to stop working late at month end with seven power pivot hacks built right into Excel. I'll take you through these seven power pivot hacks step by step, giving you all of the formulas you need to set yourself up for success. If that sounds good, let's get started. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Mike. I'm a senior finance leader, and over the last decade, I've worked in finance everywhere from the Fortune 100 to brand new startups. And over that time, I've had my share of late month ends. That was until I discovered Power Query and Power Pivot, which have completely transformed the way that I run the recurring processes. And Power Query gets a lot of attention, but Power Pivot is a really overlooked and underutilized tool. The great thing about Power Pivot, it is totally free and available in your version of Excel just by clicking a button. Definitely make sure to stick around to the end because hack number seven will blow your mind. I just learned about it literally last week and I wanted to rush this video out so I could show it to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, make sure to click the link down in the description to join my weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. Every single Thursday, I'm gonna send you free tips, tricks, and hacks just like this to make sure that you're the first one out of the office, not the last. Again, click the link down in the description to get signed up for Finance Automation Insider. I'll also send you a free copy of my guide to 15 five-minute finance automations. With all that out of the way, let's get started. So let's get started with hack number one, measures instead of calculated columns. Now, this is going to be a little bit more advanced hacks. If you have not used Power Pivot before, make sure to check out my video. I'll teach you Power Pivot in under 20 minutes. The link's going to be right up here. That video is going to walk you through the basics of how to get started with Power Pivot, how to install Power Pivot. This video is going to take it to the next level with some more advanced functionality you can do. So I'm kind of starting from the middle here. I've already got data brought in. Let me go ahead and show you the data model. Model. Again, if these terms aren't familiar, make sure to check out that other video. So we'll go ahead and we'll go to the diagram view. I've got my core data set here, which is transactions. I've got a location table that I can use just for mapping slicers. And then I've got a mapping table for time of day, product mapping, and product pricing. So pretty basic data model, just doing some mapping tables on top of my kind of core transaction data from the point of sale system. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's go back to the data view for a moment. And we're going to start by putting in a calculated column. So this column, you know, you'll see in this data set because this is point of sale data. So you'll see because this is point of sale data, we've got transactions. We don't have our revenue. That's where the pricing table is going to come in. We're going to want to pull the prices in with these two tables we've already connected. So let's go ahead and add this as a column. So I'm going to go ahead and add my column. My column is going to be called revenue. And then I'm going to set my DAX formula. So the DAX formula is going to be our transaction quantity. And that's going to be multiplied by the related unit price. And again, we've connected those already. It's ready to go. We'll hit enter. And now you'll see here is our column pulling in our revenue. So every single time there's one transaction quantity and the item costs 375, then we get 375 and that will calculate it, so on and so forth. But what you're seeing is this is actually adding data at every single row. Even if you don't need it, even if you're filtering, when you add a column, you're significantly expanding the data set. Now, one column isn't a problem, but add in 5, 10, 20 columns, it starts to become a problem. So there's a better way to do this, and that's with a measure. And a measure is going to calculate outside the sheet, sitting on top of the data model, and it's not going to add all of this data. It's only going to calculate the amount of data you need to answer the query that you're pulling. So let's go ahead and pull this in as a measure. The same thing, but just in a lighter fashion that will make your power pivots run faster. So we're going to go to calculations right here. We're going to go to measure and new measure. All right, we're going to have this in the table transactions, and we want to call this revenue measure. So now let's go ahead and write our formula. Now, when we're doing the calculated column, it's giving you the revenue at every single line. But for measure, because we're just calculating it on kind of the data set we need, we need to give it an aggregation. So like a sum, an average, a min, max. We need to give it something to aggregate the data because we're not going to calculate this at every single level. But we want the math to be done at every single level. We want each row's price to be multiplied by each row's quantity, but we don't actually need all the calculations. So that's where the sum x function comes in. Sum, we'll just do a regular sum. When you see x, and there's several functions in DAX that use x, that means it's going to calculate every single unique row. So we'll go ahead, we're going to pop in, we want the transactions table. So we've got our table in as transactions, and then we're going to do our transaction quantity. And we're going to multiply the transaction quantity by the related 
price, just like we did before. All right, then we'll close that off. We'll check our formula, make sure we're in good working condition. No errors. Okay. And now if we go to insert a pivot table, we'll see that our new measure is added and ready to use. All right, so there's our revenue measure down below. We can pull in, let's say we'll pull in our store locations on the side there, and then we can go ahead and pull our months in on the top. Look at that. So revenue does not exist in any of these data sets, and we were just able to calculate it using a measure in a really lightweight way on top of the data set. So always use measures when you can instead of calculated columns. Now let's move on to hack number two. Hack number two is to build a calendar table in Power Pivot with DAC. It's going to give you so much more functionality and enable a lot of functions that just don't work in Excel with Excel's native functionality. So again, we're going to go to Power Pivot. We're going to go to our data model. And if I come here to design, I'm going to see these buttons for date tables. So I'm going to say I want to generate a new date table. And you're going to see calendar pop in right here. Now it's giving me some things automatically, the month number, the month. I'm going to go back and double check to see what my transactions look like. So I'm using the full month name, but I'm only using three letters in the weekday. So we need to go back and fix that. That formula is just going to be three letters. So we'll go ahead and enter and now it matches. So you just wanna make sure that the formats on the table match what you need, but now we have a calendar table that DAX can use to reference to enable a lot of other functions like year-to-date. Speaking of year-to-date, let's go ahead and close this and build a year-to-date measure that we could use to calculate this. So let's go ahead and we'll go to our measures. We'll do a new measure. We're gonna call this measure name year-to-date revenue. And then we'll go ahead and put in our formula, which is gonna be total here today, you see all these great functions here that allow you to work with dates. Those only really work if you have a good calendar table. So we'll go ahead, we'll do total year to date. We're gonna pull in our revenue measure that we've already built. And then we're gonna reference our calendar for date. Make sure that formula is working. There we go. And then let's pull this in to make sure it's working. Pivot table, data model. And I can go to transactions and I can pull in my year to date revenue. There we go. Look at that. By using this calendar table built right inside DAX with one click of a button, we were able to build these functions using the date functions and it opens up a whole new world of possibilities to work with month, days, weeks, prior year, current year, prior month, current month, so many options all enabled by this calendar table. Have any questions so far? go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I read and respond to every single one, and I'm more than happy to help. Hack number three, I want to show you how to build dynamic ranking so you can rank your top customers, your top salespeople, you can rank your top products. Whatever you want to do, you can create dynamic rankings. And we're going to use another X function, rank X, which will automatically create this ranking as a measure across your data set. So let's go ahead. We're going to go back to Power Pivot. We'll go to our measures, and we'll create a new measure. We're going to call this measure product ranking, and then we'll put in our formula. So this formula is going to be rank X. Then we want to use the all function, the all function. And we'll talk about it more later, but this is going to remove filters. So we make sure that we're ranking appropriately. We want to pull in our product pricing by product ID. Close that off. We'll come down, we'll add in a calculate function so we can sum our transaction revenue. two commas here, and then we'll put in descending so that we sort the rank descending. That means that the largest will be number one and it will descend from there. And then we can just close this off. We'll check our formula, make sure all is good, all is well. Hit OK. Now we've got a function. Now let's go ahead and insert a pivot table so I can show you how this is working. We'll insert this from the data model. All right, now we're going to go and we're going to pull in our product ID right there. There you go. And then we're going to pull in our product ranking. We'll go ahead and pull some of product ID. This should be over here in rows. And there you go. So number one is the 57th biggest product. What is the number one? Product 61 is number one. So we have this dynamic ranking of all of our products by product ID. And now we know what's biggest and smallest. And we can use this to feed a dashboard, to support pivot tables, all with this great rank X function. Hack number four, you may have used this with regular pivot tables, but pivot charts work just as well off of Power Pivot data models as they do off of regular charts. You don't even need to really click anything fancy. It's just one different button. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to pivot chart. I'm going to hit pivot chart and pivot table. And when you select the data, 
instead of selecting a table or a range, I'm just going to use this workbook's data model. Hit OK, and just like if I were working off of a regular pivot table with a fixed data set, I'm now going to use a pivot chart, but I have access to all of the measures I was creating. So let's say that we wanted to look at this by store. I'm going to go to my store location. All right, there's my stores. I'm going to want to look at this across our months. All right, and then I'm going to pull in our revenue. So there's our revenue across our months. Now the one change I want to make, let's actually do this. We're going to change our chart type. We'll do this stacked because I want to see how each store is performing as we look at each individual location. So I'm going to pull my store locations up to legend. That's going to give me a stacked bar chart. And now this is completely dynamic. And again, it's using a field that we've created as a measure in Power Pivot. So you can use Power Pivot, you can set up all of your charts, you can save the formatting, you can save the layout, and every single month they'll automatically refresh as you bring new data into Power Pivot. And you have all the functionalities of regular charts. I always like to point out to people, some people think you can't copy and paste these into PowerPoint because of all the dropdowns, but they're so easy to get rid of. If I go to Pivot Chart Analyze and Field Buttons, I can just hit Hide All and everything is gone. It is a totally normal chart. How cool is that? If you're enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I post brand new videos like this every single Monday, and I don't want you to miss a thing. Hack number five, this is such an underutilized feature. We're going to build KPIs in Power Pivot. We're going to use a KPI to show our revenue goal, our revenue budget across all of our individual stores by month. So let's go ahead and create that. I'm going to go to Power Pivot. I'm going to go to KPIs. I'm going to create a new KPI. Now my new KPI, it's going to be based on my revenue measure. And I want to define it. I can define it based on another measure. So if we had current revenue, budget revenue, I can do it with that. I'm just going to do an absolute value for simplicity. And I want all of my stores to be making more than $40,000 a month. All right, so there's the KPI. Let's go ahead and insert a pivot table from our data model. Now I can pull this in. You'll see that the KPI symbol has been added to our revenue measure. And now I have all of the additional items related to the KPI. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull in my value, which is my revenue measure. I'm going to pull in the goal. I'm going to pull in the status, which is going to give me a little bar. You'll see it's green right now because it's all of the revenue. But let's go ahead and pull in our months. There's our months. And let's go ahead and pull in our store locations. There we go. So we'll see for February, our stores all across the board missed the revenue goal. See they're yellow there. Aside from that, we've got underperformance in January, but the rest of the year, everything was green. And you can get so creative with these KPIs. They're phenomenal for year over year. They're phenomenal for budget versus actuals, and they'll pull right into your pivot tables, which is super cool. And I just rarely see people using this. Hack number six, we're going to learn how to ignore slicers and other filters so we can pull in totals for things like percent of total, percent of total business, any measures we want like that. We have to ignore the slicers so we can calculate those fairly. So let's go ahead and build our measure. So we're going to use the all function, as I mentioned earlier. There's two functions, all and all selected. These functions allow you to basically tell a function in DAX to ignore all the slicers and filters so you can get a correct total. So we'll go back to Power Pivot. We're going to create a new measure. We're going to call this measure percent of total business. And then we'll go, we'll use our divide function. It's going to be the revenue measure. And that's going to be divided by the calculate function, where we will again do the revenue measure. But this time, we want the revenue measure to ignore. So this is kind of a filter, but it's a reverse filter. We're telling it, hey, ignore all the filters using the all function. Pull in all locations. Don't filter them based on what I have in the slicer that I'm going to build. Check our function. Check our function. There are no errors in our formula. We'll go ahead and hit OK. And now we're going to build a pivot table so you can see what this looks like. So we're going to go ahead and insert our pivot table from the data model once again. For rows, we're going to pull in our location. There we go. For our columns, we're going to pull in our revenue. There's our revenue right there. And then we're going to pull in our percent of total business, our new function. We're going to pull that into values as well. And here's our percentage. Let's turn those into percentages. All right now, I'm going to insert a slicer. And if I wasn't using this function, everything would just go to 100% because it's going to base it. So we're going to go ahead and hit slicer. I'm going to set the space on my location. 
There's our location. Now I'm going to go to Astoria. It's going to filter down the revenue, but it's not going to change the percent of total business. If I didn't have that all function there, it would say 100% because it's filtered out all the other data. So this allows you to dynamically keep these measures like percent of total business without looking at the filters, and it allows you to build dynamic reports and dashboards in a way that you couldn't with regular functions. And now, hack number seven. I literally just learned this and I was so excited. If you work in a lot of financial systems like SAP, BPC, or Hyperion Planning, you might be able to go and use Excel formulas to directly query from your database. And I just learned that you can do the same thing with your data model. Now, the formulas are a little bit tricky because you have to kind of write the way that pivot tables talk because it's all based on how the pivot table is querying. But there's a faster way to get the formulas and you can pull the formulas out of a pivot so you don't have to write them yourself, but then you can go build really cool customized dashboards by creating references using this structure. So let's go ahead and pull in a pivot table like we kind of had on the first one where we look at our storage by month. We'll go to from data model. Let's go ahead and pull in our revenue. All right, there's our revenue. Then I want to pull in my locations. All right, there's all of our locations, and then let's go ahead and pull in our months. And there's our months across the top. So this is the pivot table. Now you'll see if I hover over a slide, it's just going to show me the number. But if I come up here to OLAP tools, and this is so cool, I can't wait to show you. If I hit convert to formulas, instead of the numbers, it's going to show me all of the formulas. So this is the cube value function. You start by referencing where you want to pull the data, what cube you want to pull from, and then it's just going to reference all of the different pieces and all the different names within that. So once you know the nomenclature, you can lift this out because you'll see it'll be very similar, right? It's always going to reference revenue measure, and then it's just going to change the store name or it's going to change the month, and it's going to filter the revenue, and you can build dynamic dashboards. And the best part is if you just pivot to what you want and you want to be able to change it later or kind of you know draw out the dashboard, you can just start your formulas by using a pivot table, convert it using this button, and now you've got the cube value function. This is so cool to be able to use Power Pivot to build dynamic Excel-based dashboards. I can't believe that this is not more talked about because this is some incredible functionality that would have saved me so much time earlier in my career. So I hope this is hel as helpful to you as it has been. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out my guide to Power BI, which will let you take the DAX functionality you're learning here to the next level with automated reports and automated visualizations. I'm going to put the link to the video right here. This is a fantastic way to learn dashboards in 20 minutes or less. You'll be up and running. I'll catch you over there. This is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers. <laughs>